All right, so here is our no tool table and you guys will see how this is done. All right, folks, welcome back. I am trying a new thing here, thanks to my lovely video editor, Donovan. He suggested that you all actually might want to hear me and see me, which is super weird, because if you've been watching my other videos, I'm really not in them a whole lot. So, uh, uh, moving forward in this series, this is going to be a new thing. So, drop a note in the comments below with what you want to see, more of me, less of me. Trust me, I'm okay with either. This video is sponsored by The Home Depot, and we are going to be highlighting the set of uh, nine and a half inch pliers that Crescent Tools uh, came out with. They have a 35% uh, easier pivot head here for people who have little weak hands like mine, or if you have big, strong, meaty hands, it'll be even easier for you. That being said, we are also going to be doing a no-tool table, which seems really counterproductive, um, maybe not counterproductive, counterintuitive, I think is the word that I'm looking for. One of the biggest things that I've heard as a builder is of course you can make those cool things because you have a big shop and you have a CNC and you have a laser. I think a lot of builders hear those things as you, um, amass your storage space and amass your tools. But one of the things I wanna remind you guys is that I started on a uh, TV tray in my living room. From there, it moved onto a desk in the garage. And then from there, it moved to a bay of the garage, three cars uh, bay in the garage, to now, yeah, this big shop that I have built and I have paid for. What if you are starting small? Right? So the biggest fear is that I don't have tools in order to make these projects. I don't have large equipment. You don't have to. This entire series is going to be devoted to no tool tables. And sure, yeah, we have to use a couple of tools, but they're not anything that you cannot go down to your local Home Depot and spend under $200 and get. Like I said, the main component in here is going to be this set of pliers. The only other item that I'm actually using is a mold and a router. The router is optional too. You don't have to use that. Um, the reason I like these is because they were the easiest set on my hands because of the pivot head here. And it made it really, really easy to uh, just knock this table out of the park. Speaking of table, that's what you guys are here for. If you followed along on Facebook, you saw I went to Mexico. There I got this stunning plate. And I'm gonna make sure that you guys are aware of the artist. Uh, this might be backwards, but I'll make sure to include that in there. As you can see that this was uh, made there in Mexico. I got to see and have a very profound experience um, in acquiring this plate and this table was 100% inspired, I mean like actually probably copied is a better word, I copied this artist here, um, this this wonderful person who did this and turned his design into a table. So all design credit goes to him, which I will make sure that you guys see uh, his name and I'll see if I can find a website or anything for him that will show you uh, his work. And if you are ever in Ponce Curo, I'm probably saying that wrong and I'm sure I'm gonna get trashed for it, but I'm doing my best here. Um, in Mexico, and I might have to actually come back in and add a lower third because that might be actually completely the wrong way. So uh, uh, be gentle as I'm learning to be in front of the computer screen like this. It's not some place that I really like being. But anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, thank you to the Home Depot and to Crescent Tools for sponsoring this video. Um, this is how I keep all of those pesky ads out of my videos so you guys can watch this process all the way through and only pause or back out if you want to. So uh, if you're ready, let's get started. This video I'm using Maker Epoxy, which is my branded epoxy line with Total Boat. Uh, make sure to check the description below for all of the information on how you can get that. If you're going to be using a drill with a paddle mixer, make sure that you are not setting your speed super fast. You need to be aware of how many bubbles that you can add during this step. So until you become more skilled at using a drill with a paddle mixer in it in regards to epoxy, I would encourage you to only mix by hand. I like to add my mica powder and my mix all together. I feel it gives your project a lot more depth and you can achieve more opaque colors. If you're looking for translucent colors, you should stick to just mica powder. If you're looking for more opaque, you can mix both mica powder and um, pigment together to really get some cool results. All right, while you guys are watching me paint, or well, draw actually, 
I'm just using an acrylic marker on this. I would not uh, use a Sharpie or anything that's going to adhere too well to the epoxy at this point, because as you'll see, I end up erasing this. So acrylic markers are great for this because you can use uh, rubbing alcohol to clean them off or simply just soap and water if uh, you happen to make a mistake. It's a great giant eraser for your epoxy projects. So my plan here was to use the black diamond mica powders to color the bird and is actually color the entire plate. But as you watch this sequence, you'll see uh, maybe why that didn't work out. If you see it beforehand, a shout out and drop a note in those comments section if you can understand why this might not have worked. So why did I blow on the piece? The reason I did that was because I wanted to see if the additive I had added to the black diamond mica powders was stable enough to keep the powder suspended. Now, if I had poured the epoxy straight on this, all of that mica powder that you see me blow away, it would have exploded all over the entire piece. Therefore, get in the habit of uh, finding how the epoxy is going to react before you pour it. If I had not blown on this and had just dumped that on there, I would have had to start all over again. All right, so as you can see now at this point, I have switched to a completely different uh, pigment. I've actually gone over to just straight up acrylic paint. The black diamond mica powders, they work fantastic and all sorts of stuff, and I'm not giving up figuring out what I can suspend it in. But for the purpose of this project, I am now just using acrylic paint. Make sure that you let it dry between each layer. That is really important. Uh, otherwise, you'll have the same problem that you saw when I blew on the mica powder. It's gonna get everywhere. Ask me how I know. The reason I'm adding another layer here is because I wanted this to have the depth and dimension that a bowl has, that uh, concaveness that you see when you look at a bowl. I was trying to get that same effect, so by building this up in layers, it was giving me that visual effect that the bird was at the bottom of the bowl, and then the flowers start creeping up the side. With Maker Proxy, you can pour another layer approximately every four to five hours, depending on your environment. I let these fully dry because I was painting in between them, but traditionally if I'm doing multi-layer work, I only cure them for about the four to five hour mark before moving on to the next layer. When to use a torch and when to use a heat gun. If you're simply popping bubbles, you can use a torch, but if you're trying to manipulate the epoxy, you really want to get in the habit of using a heat gun. The Wagner Ferno 300 is my heat gun of choice, and in this case I'm using a burns matic torch, which I happen to love as well. While you guys are sitting here watching me paint with all of these bright orange colors, I do want to take another moment to thank Crescent Tools for providing these set of pliers for this. As I talked about, they have a 35% greater cutting power as well as a laser hardened cutting edges, which will help you get a clean cut and remain sharp over 50% longer. For folks like myself who do not have super strong hands, this is a great in-between to be able to use. And as I said in the beginning, for people who have big giant meaty claws, you will also find them very easy to use due to the way that they have um, ergonomically designed the handles. So keep that in mind when you are looking for uh, tools. And like we've talked about in this video, this is a no tool table. And we are getting to that point, so stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna pause here for a second before we get on to how this is a no tool table. I went down to Home Depot and I picked up these legs. They're in the ready-made section. You can go for, usually typically find them over by the banisters and the stair stuff. The reason it was important to use as minimal tools as possible for this table is again, I hear it so very often, I just can't make a table because I don't have the tools. You guys, all I'm gonna use here is I'm gonna use these and when you see how I did this, you're gonna be like, Man, why didn't I think of that? 
By pulling out the set screws using the set of pliers here, all we have to do is adhere the legs to the table. How are we going to adhere the legs to a table? Dude, we're working with epoxy. How do you think we're going to adhere the legs to the table? These babies ain't never coming off. You're going to need to break them apart using a sledgehammer to get them off. So think outside the box. You don't have to have a lot of tools to get this stuff done. You just have to think outside the box and use your brain. All right. So uh, back to the fun part, which is the video. Now before you guys get all up in arms about why I'm not measuring this accurately. When I first started, nobody was here to teach me. And there are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube videos out there that can show you how to measure accurately. The purpose of this video is just to get you started. Just to show you that you don't have to do rocket science and or be super precise in your measurements in order to get something going. I think, I think it'll be okay, to be honest. My famous last words will make all the YouTubers scream in agony that I did not line it up in a perfect manner. I went ahead and used this four minute epoxy to do the initial set on the legs. This was never intended to be the main structural component. It was just meant to give me something, uh, give, give the legs some meat to hold on to until we get to the next step. I ended up doing a light sanding across the entire top of this table. When I was doing the router work, which isn't uncommon if you router over epoxy, sometimes there can get little nicks that happen. In order to make the entire piece flat, all I had to do was sand it down a little bit and do this top coat on it, which brings the shine right back. It's really a great way to save yourself a ton of buffing by simply just doing another top coat of Maker Epoxy. After the drip head is completely cured, you can use a heat gun to lightly heat it up. What happens is when you lightly heat it up, it softens the edge of the epoxy, allowing you to simply pull the tape off without it ripping underneath. Do not burn the epoxy, do not burn the tape, keep that heat gun moving, but as you can see those drips pop right off and you have minimal sanding. All right, so there you guys have it. That is the first of the no tool tables. And yes, I understand that I'm using a couple of tools, but in reality, we're not using anything big. We're using a set of pliers, a mold, and a router if you want to. Everything else is hand sanded. So uh, I have the table sitting here right next to me and you guys can uh, see it here. And of, of course I have my uh, handy dandy no tool uh, pliers that we use. I do hope that you enjoyed this and there will be more to come. Feel free to drop comments down below of challenges you would like me to take on on this whole no tool situation. Um, there will be more of these. I'm going to be doing bigger ones and I think you're going to find those actually really exciting. And again, I want to thank our sponsors Crescent and the Home Depot for uh, providing you guys with this video because without them, uh, yeah, I'd still be making them, but they wouldn't be half as cool. Uh, again, also, thank you to Donovan, who has become a stable voice of sanity in this whole uh, trying to um, 
make YouTube videos, something that if you've been here for a while, you realize is not my strong suit. So thanks for playing along. Uh, I'm gonna do one last shot of this table now that you guys can see it as I sit back in my comfy chair and remember where I'm supposed to look for the camera. Thank you guys for joining me and uh, being a part of this build.